Hello there, everyone. Today, we're looking at every new feature coming in patch 10.0.5. There are a ton of great features in here, but make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see what I think the best feature is. Let's dive right in with the Storm's Fury event. So this is a successor to the Primal Storms event that happens all over the Dragon Isles right now, but it exists solely within the Primalist tomorrow. It's on a five hour rotation and functions a little bit differently. When the event is up, there will be four portals across the zone. Head to each one and defend it in a battleground style capture the point battle as Primalist enemies try to recapture it from you. Be careful though, because there is a zone wide debuff called freezing that you'll need to manage. Every few seconds, you'll get a stack of freezing, which does increasingly more damage over time, the more it stacks up to 20 times. To counter this, you need to gain stacks of a buff called Warmth, which stacks up to 25 times. Warmth does nothing on its own, but each time a stack of Freezing would be applied, it instead just removes one stack of Warmth. You can get this in various ways, either through items sold by Tarnormu, which builds a campfire for a short duration, or through effects on the gear sold by Brendormi. It's also worth noting that you cannot negate this with any cooking toys or abilities, which would make this whole mechanic a bit too trivial, I suppose. You can also gain stacks of Warmth by hanging out in the Time Walker bubble where you first enter the zone. Once the little bar fills up, you've closed the portal and you're free to move to another one. These primalist enemies also drop elemental overflow and a new currency called Essence of the Storm, which you can use a combination of to purchase 385 rings and trinkets, a crate of elemental overflow to use on the old Primal Storms vendor, a toy that summons a storm to chase your friends, as well as an adorable Vorquin pet and a new Hornstrider mount. There is also a weekly event with weekly loot, so it would behoove you to do it at least once per week. White and gray items can now be transmogged. Of all the features on this list, this is definitely one of them. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of people, myself included, who are very happy about this, but this is not the most exciting change. And, well, there's really not much else to say about it either. So let's move on to the Revival Catalyst. Okay, so this one's actually called the Revival Catalyst, apparently, not the Inspiration Catalyst. Thankfully, though, we found that after I made a whole video on it, which you can check out here if you'd like a deep dive on this feature specifically. But basically what it will do is convert any gear that is not gained from crafting or renown into an applicable piece of tier gear. This includes set and non-set tier which is awesome if you're trying to collect a whole transmog set. Not in my original video, though, is how to gain the charges, which we just found out. You can gain one per week by picking up a daily quest and completing any of these activities on screen right now. Once you fill the quest meter to 100%, sort of like the aiding the Accord weekly quest, you'll gain one charge for the revival catalyst. This adds one charge to every character on your account, not just the character you completed the quest on. And to be clear, this is not a bind on account thing. It generates one charge for every character that they can each use. By the way, guys, if this video helps you out at all, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel it helps us out a ton and i have a lot more like this in the pipeline there's also some huge changes coming to professions they are changing the cost to unlock specializations for professions with three trees from 100 points to 75 and professions with four trees are having their final two unlocks reduced to 60 and 75 down from 75 and 100 there are also multiple little tweaks and fixes which you can read about on screen now i'll also link the patch notes in the description of the video if you want to read more about that for our next subject which is class changes there are a ton of these i don't have the time or class knowledge to break all these down for you but again you can check that out in the patch notes for more info at high level though no prot warrior somehow somehow dodged any changes like at all nothing brewmaster received some significant buffs though thank god and we can see some huge changes coming to classes like druid monk priest and non-prot warriors. Given how much they've already been tweaking, it's amazing to still see so much being changed, improved, and shuffled around with class balancing. And I hope we continue to see this level of constant support from Blizzard. They are really raking in the Ws right now, and that is a great feeling. Future Jesse here. So apparently they heard that I was making a video and I had already put in all the class changes. So they released some more right before the patch goes live. You can find a link to those changes in the description. All right, so the Trial of Style is back with a few changes. There are some new and improved cosmetic rewards as well as some new prompts during the trial. Make sure to get out and collect all the new white and gray transmogs you can to be ready for this one. We're also adding some new rare and elite mobs in areas of Nokud Hold, Imbu, the Cobalt Assembly, Tear Hold, and the Primalist Future. These rares will drop loot on par with the current super rares in the Azure Span and Obsidian Citadel area of the Waking Shore. All right, next is UI improvements. Gone are the days when you need to move any add-on to move several of the UI elements that Blizzard annoyingly left unable to be modified in the default UI, including the experience bar, the reputation bar, the bag add-ons, the micro 
icebreaker menu and the durability icon. You can also now bump them into place with the arrow keys, thank God. Moving on to talents, you can now reset both the trees, your class tree or your spec tree by clicking on the reset button here. You can also inspect someone and copy their build like this. So now rather than stealing my build from Wowhead, I can engage more directly with the game by just stealing it from other players. For accessibility, there is also now a focal window and edge darkening for dragon riding. I know dragon riding was a huge concern for a lot of people that suffer from motion sickness. And I know personally a few people who couldn't even get the game because they knew they would get sick from dragon riding. So I really hope this helps a wider audience jump in and really enjoy this expansion. There are also new icons for some rares across all the zones, new icons for fine fish, fine herbs, fine minerals, racing icons for dragon riding world quests, and a bunch of other minor bug fixes and tweaks. The Mage Tower is back. This patch will see the return of the Mage Tower. It will be back on patch day in its Shadowlands time walking form, rewarding new palette swap versions of Legion tier sets, as well as the Fell Werebear form for Druid and the Book Mount for completing every challenge. I know a whole lot of us didn't play in Shadowlands, so having this back is a very welcome change for me. I would love to get that Werebear form on my Druid, who, by the way, is perfectly fine, guys. Seriously, she's still here. See, it was a joke. I'm sorry. And finally, my most anticipated feature is the trading post. That's right, the trading post is a brand new amazing feature in this patch and it's definitely not a battle pass, but it kind of is and isn't and I think it's not yeah, it's, it's not. How this works, though, is that each month you'll get 500 traders tender just for being subscribed to the game. And the first month you'll get an extra 500 traders tender for having purchased Dragonflight or if you purchase it now or in the future. You can also get up to 500 more traders tender from completing various activities in game, which we will loop back to in a minute. You can use this traders tender to buy all sorts of awesome cosmetic items, mounts and pets from one of the two new trading posts, one in Stormwind and one in Orgrimmar. If you find an item you really want but can't afford, you can also use this handy little freeze button here to save it as long as you keep it frozen. Once you arrive at the trading post, you just need to complete a simple quest chain. Then if you take a look in your adventure guide, you'll find a new traveler's log that shows you all of the different categories and activities that you can participate in to earn your extra 500 traders tender. Each activity is worth a certain amount of points and at each increment of 200 points, you'll earn 100 traders tender. If you earn 1000 points, you'll get all 500 traders tender and a bonus reward. The first of which is Ashadar, the Harbinger of Dawn, an amazing looking warden themed mount. And don't worry, a lot of these activities are really simple. One I had even completed before I logged in to test it. Others are a little tougher, but you have a whole month to do them. I believe in you. It is worth noting, though, that while this is a feature of patch 10.0.5, this specific feature is not releasing until the first week of February, and it will refresh on the first of the month after that. This is an amazing expansion agnostic feature that I cannot wait to see where they go with. And that is all the major features of 10.0.5. Make sure to check out this video next if you want to learn more about the Revival Catalyst, and have a great day, everybody.